uh, I would like to uh, add some more very interesting and important uh, so results uh, towards the next century. We should use much more the nonlinear phenomena uh, to the catalyst. For example, our recent uh, research is so uh, achievement, for example, I would like to say shortly. Everybody know the first generation methanol synthesis catalyst was uh, established in Germany, BASF, in early 1930. The catalyst component is zinc oxide and uh, chromium oxide mixed by physically, simply physically. But uh, uh, this catalyst needs high temperature and uh, uh, high pressure to synthesize methanol from syngas. And after 30 years later, it means a new logistic curve. So so-called low temperature methanol synthesis catalyst was established by ICI of United Kingdom. This catalyst was uh, prepared by so-called co-precipitation method. And then still now, all over the world, this kind of catalyst is used as an industrial catalyst for methanol synthesis from syngas. But the multi-metal metal, metal oxide components catalyst, if even uh, we say the co-precipitation method, but the equivalent point of uh, uh, metal oxide, each metal oxide is different. So only apparently so uniform, but uh, uh, non-uniformity is principally exist in this kind of method. Especially we can easily expl uh, ex uh, have a ex experience uh, precipitation material uh, during the course of washing process, approaching pH uh, seven neutralize the so stick particles disperse segregate each other, and then so non uniformity comes. So if the real catalytic active site locates the uh, borderline of the other component, or, uh, or oxide components, then separate, uh, separate, and the effectivity, effectiveness factor of this catalyst uh, decreases very much. So we improved first by the different method, so-called uniform generation method. It means uh, 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 concentrated nitrate uh, metal nitrate solution, a mixed solution was, is contacted with gaseous ammonia, with a thin layer of liquid, and then totally change into gel, gelous state. Then we dried carefully, and then uh, summer decomposed directly. So we can avoid uh, any washing process, and then uh, making uh, ammonium, uh, ammonium nitrate. Then ammonium nitrate very easily decomposed at uh, around uh, 200 degrees C. So we can obtain the very so uniform and high surface area material. The necessary condition is use like uh, alumina, uh, aluminum uh, so nitrate because this kind of material make a so gelas matrix. It's a necessary condition. But anyway, by this method we can improve the methanol synthesis activity 50% increase. But 50% uh, is not so much. Then second step we uh, so 
established a so third generation method of synthesis catalyst, then it is very important, I think. For my almost 40 years experience of catalyst synthesis, most necessary things is uh, it's a uh, so principle it's uh, balance of acceleration and retardation if acceleration only it is inst uh, make a instable at a high reaction rate for example methanol synthesis most important things on catalyst surface is uh, so uh, intermediate oxidation state between cupric oxide and methyl uh, copper, methyl copper. But if reaction rate uh, enhanced very much, if so hydrogen uh, supply is, only hydrogen supply is enhanced, the surface of catalyst incline too much uh, reduced state. So finally, uh, deteriorate. We cannot obtain the, uh, maintain the optimum condition. So very important point is uh, it's a new concept. It's balancely join the opposite for so-called inverse uh, hydrogen spillover effect. Hydrogen, normal hydrogen spillover effect by the uh, combination of precious some precious metal like palladium or and then the inverse spillover effect is a uh, gallium oxide for example gallium oxide uh, so sp can spill over hydrogen inversely so combined with balancing then we can op operate very higher uh, reaction rate still very stable the optimal condition and then as a result we can uh, realize uh, 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 in practically eight kilogram methanol space time yield per liter catalyst per hour. It means uh, more than more than ten times or twenty times uh, ten to fifteen times of conventional industrial catalyst level. So we believe this kind of catalyst uh, will become the third generation methanol synthesis catalyst. Why we uh, studies, we investigate this subject is uh, there is uh, some reason. Just as mentioned before, the methanol to hydrocarbon conversion or all of in Oligomerization involve autocatalysis. So the methanol or olefin concentration in gas phase must be higher, much higher. Otherwise, we cannot obtain the so, gasoline selective in selectable. So that's why we uh, so aim to improve the methanol synthesis catalyst. Uh, by this way, so the balance of acceleration and uh, retardation is uh, not only catalysis, but always it's important even in our human life. I think, I believe, every, any time the good catalyst uh, principle is very so similar to the so best behavior uh, in the human life. And then, uh, for, for example, so many kind of application still advanced. And then, uh, yes, but uh, anyway, most uh, important, oh, so uh, another big uh, area is a computer simulation application of computer simulation to the catalyst design or catalyst uh, understanding. Uh, it is very impressive story. Uh, about nine years ago, uh, first Boreskov Memorial uh, Catalyst meeting was held in Novosibirsk, 
former Soviet Union. And then I was invited from Japan with uh, Professor Tamaru. And then gave a lecture here. And then also uh, John Thomas attended this meeting. And then uh, he gave a very impressive lecture. Just, it is my first experience to hear the computer graphics uh, applied to the catalyst research. In his case, uh, so Zerite is a very nice target of computer graphics. And then uh, in his lecture, very beautiful, so computer graphics, uh, missing, captured inside them, so the right uh, channel structures. Anyway, after I returned back to, my, uh, to Japan, I started to introduce my laboratory, uh, big facility to uh, perform the computer so simulated uh, uh, research. And finally, we can obtain from the government some special fund. And then um, so started to application of catalyst research, computer simulation. At, at that moment, my research uh, associate professor, Akira Miyamoto, you know that him very much. He engaged this subject mainly. And then as a result, he promoted to the full professor to move to Tohoku University. And still now he uh, continuing this uh, uh, research very extensively. Of course, but uh, in my laboratory still continue this far. And already found a very, very impressive uh, so result. For example, we can do very not so easy task to uh, measure the diffusion constant in microporous crystal material because the uh, uh, diffusion process is very, very slow. And if to promote uh, diffusion rate, if we elevate temperature, the reaction accompany. But uh, if we can so conduct uh, in computer simulation, we can do it very much uh, using uh, molecular dynamics or molecular uh, field, and then uh, every pot potential can can be calibrated to, uh, and then the effect of the so moving molecule. Then we can extend to the instead of. Uh, experimental, we can obtain the so diffusion constant for different kinds of hydrocarbons, or uh, not only hydrocarbons, but uh, um, the different kind of uh, geometric materials, for example. And of course, this kind of technology can be extended to the evaluation, estimation of uh, some strengths of framework. Then we found, uh, for example, uh, beta type zeolite is very strong against uh, high temperature. And uh, this result already uh, applied to the in practical catalyst of Limban uh, Linux catalyst in Osaka Gas Company in Japan. Uh, we, we can differentiate the strengths or summer strengths of framework very easily. And then <coughs> Other project is a very interesting um, subject is uh, uh, evaluation, estimation of <coughs> acid strengths. So far, we can only the measurement of ammonia dissolved, dissolved profile, so-called ammonia TPD, is only the effective way to evaluate the acid strengths of the solid acid substance like a zeolite, but it is, uh, everybody notice it is very, it, the information is very qualitative. Only the peak uh, temperature, high temperature peak is uh, so large or small or P 
peak position temperature was lower or higher, something. Still, this information was very important. But using Monte Carlo method, it means uh, like uh, the probability law, we can experiment on the computer, ammonia, so absorption and desorption, uh, recycling a very huge amount of uh, so <coughs> repetition of calculation. And finally, we can <coughs> obtain the surprising facts. For example, protonated GSM-5, 8 GSM-5, it's the acid strength is surprisingly very so localized. Some points, very strong, simple acid strengths <coughs> can be obtained in each unit. Why surprise? But uh, uh, many experimental facts can be uh, explained by this uh, result because uh, Dr. Olson or Mobile people uh, presented the paper and emphasized the content of aluminum in GSM-5 strictly proportional to the acid strength or so-called alpha value, uh, normal hexane cracking. It means uh, aluminum content proportional to the acid strength. But why? So uh, other uh, zeolite, like Hoja side type zeolite, not so good relationship. But by this computer simulation, we can understand the acid strength in each uh, so crystal unit, localized only one point, concentrated. That's why the reason of hydrogen transfer reaction uh, occurred. I think, uh, anal like analogy, it is a <coughs> black hole of space. Every thing's approach to the so strong acid sites. Then, if aromatization occurred and hydrogen so evolved from the molecule but olefin olefin hydrocarbon so exists very near of the acid site so hydrogen easily shift to the olefin and there is no chance to evolve but the other metal silicate like gallosilicate and iron silicate it's different from each other but uh, acid strengths, this uh, so located, not only concentrated to one peak, uh, <coughs> dispersed, some parts, for example. It is very interesting. Of course, and the extent of this ammonia absorption, we can extend the absorption calculation into uh, to the uh, water and the reactor, some uh, reaction products. Uh, reaction, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and then result of this absorption data can be applied separation technology. Of course, isotherm, isobar can be obtained it, uh, theoretically. And then recently found uh, very important facts to so carbon dioxide and nitrogen separation, and oxygen and nitrogen separation by pressure swing absorption, we can apply the result. Of, uh, and, the, and the capacity of water absorption is one of the reasons the so steam uh, resistance. For example, aluminosilicate, GSM-5, has a, uh, if we compare the another conventional uh, zeolite, GSM-5 has a very less uh, affinity for steam. So uh, high Celsius uh, material. But still, if aluminum content is high in GSM-5, it, uh, it has uh, some significant affinity of water. But for example, Cobalt silicate has a very low so affinity for steam. Then
Then we conclude, almost conclude. This is a reason why the cobalt silicate is extraordinarily high resistance with steam and uh, so high temperature. So people of air products like John Arma, Dr. John Arma and his co-workers co uh, presented a paper uh, without no reason, without reason, the cobalt in uh, ion exchange DSM-5 is so, so exceptional high stability for against uh, high temperature and uh, coexistence of steam. That's why so we can, uh, of course, experiment is always most important, but sometimes very difficult uh, uh, experiment uh, can be assisted by the computer simulation with uh, computer graphics. So, uh, uh, not so much time, but uh, I almost uh, told my so think uh, and uh, so uh, philosophy of my research. Back. How how does uh, education compare in Japan today to when you were a student? Yes. Then uh, yes. Uh, it is very important things, but if you allow me, I would like to uh, continue uh, this interview after the lunch time. Okay. okay. Yes. And then uh, always uh, so hope the good relationship between uh, all over the so chemists, uh, especially uh, catalyst researchers. And then, of course, United States is a uh, mostly powerful and uh, important uh, country uh, uh, from the viewpoint, not only from viewpoint uh, result as an uh, industrial uh, catalyst, but uh, any other reasons. But also, Japan is also most important partner. So I would like to so talk this point the second part of the interview. Okay. Okay. Uh, closing of my so former part of my talk, I would like to introduce a recent uh, forthcoming program that we, I, uh, uh, we are so preparing. One is uh, this, uh, you can see the very so uh, easily understand our logo. ICCDU Forms. It means uh, International Congress of Carbon Dioxide Utilization, Fourth International Meeting. And this logo, uh, so I made by myself. Uh, you can easily, so can understand it's a CO2 design. And then the imitate a global, a globe model. And then this is a symbol of Japanese mountain Fuji. And then, so written in keep globe clear. <laughs> because in my child age, in especially uh, water, the color of sky was very dark blue. But we cannot see this kind of uh, clear color in recent years because a heavy industrialized and always uh, air atmosphere is so something that so contains uh, very so small aerosol so reflects uh, light. We cannot see anymore the so blue sky. Except only the beginning of the uh, July, uh, or beginning of January, because everybody start to produce such kind of activity from the factory. So I like, I, I hope, I hope, and then uh, I think about 300 uh, person come from all over the world and discuss how we can protect 
our global dream. And the second one is, uh, this is somewhat symbol, flag of Japan. But uh, as you can see, catalyst surveys from Japan. It will be published next year, uh, two volumes per, uh, per year, and started from next year. For a long time, it was requested that Japan has uh, their own language. And then uh, the grammar and uh, so Japanese language uh, cannot so easily understand for Western developing countries, people. But uh, and, uh, there are so many so scientific results uh, published, but unfortunately only by uh, written in Japanese. And then you can recall so many years ago, a lot of uh, papers, all papers, almost all papers in chemistry field published from Soviet Union are translated into English. But everybody maybe recognize that recent research activity in Russia has increased very much, uh, maybe due to the deflates uh, economic state. I visited uh, so many times in Russia, but unfortunately compared with uh, in case of Japan, there are no good uh, modern facility in laboratory, and I think it's different. So this is everybody want to know uh, the result developed done by Japanese uh, in English. So this is kind of survey articles, not only survey but uh, mainly survey, and already uh, so first. Uh, authors for first volume uh, settles. And then, now I am uh, so president of the Qatar Society Japan, and uh, former president uh, Misono, Makoto Misono, and Yoshio uh, Ono. We are three uh, so editor in chief. And beside our, our chief in editors, many domestic uh, so editorial boards and also international editor, uh, so advisors. So uh, we can expect uh, the effect of the activity, then you can catch uh, our research activity much more easier. Okay, so I advance to the so second part of my talk. Uh, maybe we uh, uh, for from the Western people sometimes uh, thinking of Japanese is not understandable somewhat unclear, but uh, not always uh, our thinking is uh, uh, not so academic or scientific, but uh, as I talk in my, uh, at, my uh, at the beginning of my talk, uh, maybe next century, uh, so the non-linear phenomena or fuzzy uh, phenomena Another so target for the uh, research or thinking. Otherwise, linear phenomena already almost uh, so finished to study during in this century by the a lot of effort of humankind. But the still remains very huge area. More almost non uh, linear phenomena. It cannot be, it can, 
easily cannot uh, express by derivatives. Uh, that's uh, some other approach. But uh, quite often we faced, even in in so lifetime, uh, unbelievable things or not so easy solved things. So, uh, and then we shall consider even not only target, but uh, so the person, researchers, uh, to make uh, some so free thinking person. This is an educational problem. Uh, I don't know exactly in the United States, but several uh, years ago, there is a famous uh, so discussion uh, published in Chemical uh, Engineering News from American Chemical Society. It was held in California, Berkeley, your university. Uh, some Buddha and uh, Alex Bell and uh, James Ross from Air Products and maybe the, um, some other uh, person together and discuss the anxious of the future catalyst research in the United States. And then they pointed out uh, a lot of uh, difficult problems. Because as uh, so Heinemann told in his plenary lecture in this conference, uh, uh, reflecting, so, uh, so recalling uh, 40 years the past. Uh, catalyst is unbelievable, so undoubtedly important for the industry. Uh, I think about uh, more than 80% of chemical products uh, depend on the catalysis. But unfortunately, a very few, uh, if, even in sense of mass and price of catalyst, produce huge amount of products. And then the beta catalyst is, has a longer catalyst life. It means uh, there's almost no economic merit or advantage for catalyst itself. So this point is a very so important point. On the other hand, many polymer uh, products or engineering plastic or organic synthesis, there are so many tasks to uh, study. So a lot of students or a lot of researchers inclined to the field of the, uh, organic chemistry. But uh, mm, in organic chemistry and uh, so catalyst field, people don't write uh, so <coughs> study so much. But uh, this is a very big contradiction in industrial side or so humankind. It is very, very extremely important. But uh, so people engaged directly this kind of matter are very, very few. Always, so catalyst is working on the central part of the process, chemical engineering process, but uh, it's uh, some kind of black box. Not so much, so many people so contact with, the, with this uh, matter. This some secret secret uh, so feature of the catalyst uh, cannot gather the young, brilliant uh, students. But uh, one more very important and delicate problem is exist in this problem. For, for example, uh, many research researchers in catalyst field 
of course, naturally cynical, the very, very fundamental surface science is necessary to design the good practical catalyst. And then, of course, in the United States, very famous uh, professors engaged in this, also in Japan. Uh, Another number of this surface science researcher is uh, rather also larger than the researchers engaged to develop the catalyst, uh, practical catalyst. This is troubles, some troubles. Uh, someone said uh, some American um, catalyst engineer said several years ago when I attend uh, invited to the Florida conference. It's a very famous one. Uh, mainly Professor Drago of uh, Florida University organized this meeting in, in each year. And about a few lecture, lecturer are invited from uh, all over the world some uh, some modern topics. Others, uh, mainly the researcher, come from the uh, company of the United States. And then at that moment, I invited, I was invited at the topics of paraffin aromatization. And one more lecturer was invited from Hamburg, Hamburg University in Germany, his name is uh, Professor Kaminsky. As, uh, so, so it's innovation of the so-called Kaminsky uh, catalyst for problem polymerization or metallocene catalyst. And then at that moment, uh, some uh, researcher of the United States, he uh, belongs to private company complains very much. Uh, he said, frankly saying, too much so fundamental so surface science is not uh, produced so good catalyst in practical. So, uh, and then the, if so, brilliant students is not does not choose this area as his life work field. So uh, it, it is uh, some crisis for the, uh, so for the researcher in this field. Even I don't know exactly in the state of university uh, in the United States, in Japan, uh, normally field of catalysis is called catalytic chemistry. Catalytic chemistry. It means catalyst research is so put at the one of the field of big chemistry. So at many uh, so reconstruction of organization, uh, catalytic chemistry become very so minor existence. And then every so destruction of the organization then decrease. It's very serious state status. So I propose that this to solve this big contradiction, we should uh, make a uh, destruction of the so study field. I think uh, or I believe catalyst, so-called catalytic chemistry, is not only a very minor division of chemistry, but very so big so category, almost the same as or more than chemistry. Because catalyt catalytic chemistry, uh, catalytic uh, study, and uh, 
uh, yes, it's involved not only chemistry, but also surface chemistry, uh, surface science, and uh, reaction engineering. So many fields of uh, so studies uh, involved. So I propose, but uh, I don't know. But maybe uh, in English. Uh, I asked uh, in during my stay in Russia. Uh, we so is there a word corresponding to chemistry? Maybe uh, nobody knows. Always said catalytic chemistry, but uh, like as uh, a single word catalyst. No, uh, I never heard this kind of words. So if a chemist means uh, so researcher, he is studying uh, chemistry. But correspond words, I don't know in chemistry uh, catalyst field. So uh, anyway, uh, first way uh, deconstruction this destruction of this uh, academic field is really necessary I think so and then uh, another point of view there are so many journals of in related in catalysis uh, like this one and uh, so general of catalysis applied catalysis general and environmental and uh, molecular catalysis and then uh, catalyst later, catalyst today, catalyst topics, so many. And then not so happy things, uh, so-called index. So um, uh, what uh, impact factor of the journal is not so high compared with uh, nature and science. Um, so some unification of this journal may be necessary, but uh, how we can uh, so improve uh, this situation? So someone said or someone thinking, and then uh, during this uh, conference, maybe yesterday, uh, some special session D was settled. And then discussion of the future of the catalyst and the catalyst researchers uh, discussed in panel style. I unfortunately I have no chance to so uh, to attend the meeting, but some participants said to me, uh, it is really important the philosophy of the catalyst, not only the detail. But the uh, philosophy or principle is much should much more so told and discussed each other. So, uh, it, of course, there are so many excellent education people uh, exist in each countries. Very crowded uh, and honorable person, and then fortunately. In my country, also uh, exist. This is uh, before the Meiji Revolution. Uh, I think about 130 years ago. Uh, sh so named Shōin Yoshida. Uh, he's a very brilliant so person, and then even 10 years old. He teached a lot of things to the uh, young samurai, uh, and then uh, when he grows, he had a private so, so school, and only one year and a half. There are so many so students come to his school. And then many of them 
contribute to the modern Japanese government in Meiji area. It is very so interested uh, evident uh, so facts to consider how why such a so very fluctuated so facts uh, happened only so Yamaguchi pre prefecture is a so western part of the very small prefecture of Japan and the uh, so Hagi city is a small town, but uh, and one, only one year to have so many important distinguished person come from this school and then support or so establish the Japanese uh, so modern uh, government and then behave to the so modernization of Japan, Japan. So I think always this is uh, some original point of education. I understand he didn't teach maybe not so concrete facts, but uh, he his effort is concentrated to each principle, guiding principle. And then if a student catch this guiding principle and then adjust his ability and then apply it freely each uh, or each way, then very palliative and uh, so attractive uh, so talent I think this kind of uh, so education is now recently absolutely lack. Everything uh, so systematized. So very stereotype student come out from the school is very trouble because I am st I stayed uh, uh, in Kyoto University already forty one years. And then I so recall past 40 years. Now the in our neighbor, very so sophisticated modern instruments, so many. Uh, but uh, so thinking in my uh, mind is decreasing for some students. It is very serious so situation. If we recover the so in education like uh, showing Yoshida, I think more fruitful and uh, more attractive field of catalysis will come back. So, in my uh, lecture talk, I always uh, talk the, so at the beginning of physiotropic synthesis. achieved by my uh, former professor, Gen uh, Kita. Uh, one of his students, graduate stu uh, undergraduate student, Shinjiro Kodama, uh, came to, uh, to his laboratory, and the professor Kita asked to Kodama, in your so graduate research, you should so find out the excellent co-catalyst for the fischer synthesis. And then Shinjiro Kodama um, studies about only the 20 or 21st, uh, 21 years old student. And then within a very short period, he found a great uh, so positive effect on the fischer tropic synthesis is, uh, is by Dan, uh, 
by the smaller uh, addition of a small amount of magnesia and thorium oxide. And then he wrote in his uh, graduate so research report. This result will transfer to the uh, German technology, and then they incorporated in this uh, component in their industrial catalyst for physiotropic synthesis. Germany make uh, 10 factories during the second one, and then they produce 130, no, no, 1,300 tons of man-made petroleum made by 10 factories by using uh, cobalt-based thoria and uh, magnesia supported on Kizabur. And then it is some other interesting story I think of. Uh, German people like uh, Hans Schultz, Professor Hans Schultz of Karlsruhe University complains to me. Uh, Everybody is called fischer synthesis, but don't forget one more important person, Professor Pichler, uh, Professor Pichler, almost cobalt-based catalyst, was prepared by himself. And then, uh, it is a very symbolic story. Also, you know, the very famous one is uh, Dr. Uh, so, so, in case of ammonia synthesis, it is called everybody by, uh, yes, uh, Have a Bosch technology, but one more, don't forget, uh, Doctor. Um, what uh, should it uh, Metash. 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 He, most of the uh, so catalysts are prepared by himself and by his co-workers. Always. Catalyst is most important, most important, but always this kind of treatment. It means catalyst research work is since so preparation of new catalyst is so firstly so developed the new synthesis, just photosynthesis. But uh, many catalyst researchers, especially in chemical engineering course, they so import from the industry or somewhere catalyst. And the only analysis or characterization, and of course, analysis and characterization is not so responsible for the results of the reaction. So uh, it is uh, rather easier to make paper or only synthesis of material is not so difficult task prepared and then uh, determine the, uh, the new product by using the x-ray diffraction pattern or scanning at the microscope or something but uh, catalysis it's a uh, indirect process. If the catalyst is uh, prepared one is very beautiful, but it doesn't work good. It's no meaning. So always catalyst researcher uh, should engage from the preparation and the characterization and the application of the reaction. This so balanced cycle is absolutely necessary. But unfortunately, such kind of researcher in catalyst field is not so much. So I think this kind of direction should stress much more in the next century or future. So objective studies is necessary. Reflect of this uh, situation, you know, uh, mm, Nobel Prize is founded by Alfred Nobel and started this 20th century. 
first Nobel Prize are in chemistry fields, of course, Pankov. And in physical uh, physics area is Rentgen, as his foundation of X-ray in 19, just 100 years ago. And then at the beginning, very applicable, applied source results are given for them. For example, mm, so uh, so many so uh, related to the uh, artificial diamond synthesis. Moasan, uh, uh, he gave uh, he received the so <coughs> Nobel Prize for the result of uh, high pressure. something, very practical things, but recently, especially in chemistry field, we don't know except Tibra And then in 1981, Professor Kenichi Fukui, he's my, uh, he was a, uh, he was a professor of my same department received a Nobel Prize with uh, Professor Hoffman of the United States as a result of Frontier Electronic Theory. And then this naming was uh, made by my former professor, Haruo Shingu. He was an associate professor of, its, of uh, great uh, age Kita. And uh, anyway, uh, in 1983, I visited Princeton uh, Research Laboratory of Mobile. Just uh, at that day, uh, White was retired from Mobile and then to go to Switzerland to deliver some lectures that uh, he was waiting for me, my visit. And then I heard uh, from someone he was nominated to the Nobel Prize as a result of uh, foundation of GSM-5. But unfortunately, he didn't succeed. It. Yeah, I pointed out, oh, very sorry, I believe this kind of uh, material epoch-making epoch material is uh, so uh, really so correspond to the result of the uh, Nobel Prize. But uh, also he said, oh, it was very sorry. But uh, instead of them, a uh, parking price, uh, American Chemical Society evaluate his works and then Parking price, and then uh, I think after uh, Kenichi Fukui got the Nobel Prize in this quantum chemistry field, uh, about ten years, experimental research work in chemistry is not so bright uh, compared with so theoretical chemistry. And many brilliant students go to theoretical chemistry. So uh, I think Nobel Prize, the value of Nobel Prize, or significance of Nobel Prize, it's even this kind of famous and important prize, the value is approached to the Plato. So, Every, everything developed in this century, once so recalled very carefully and examine the true value, and if necessary, we should change in style towards the uh, next century to survive for the humankind. Otherwise, if we continue the style 20th century, 
maybe we cannot uh, so solve the very so serious environmental problems. Uh, next century, maybe we produce in this century by the uh, for the sake of uh, uh, big effort for petrochemical industry, for example. Uh, so many clothes and uh, goods, uh, uh, high quality goods, and uh, even also, of course, uh, uh, ethnic uh, products are flat all over our, our neighbors. But uh, each of them consume very much energy. And uh, Asian people, like China and uh, Thailand and Malaysia, these uh, people who live in those countries also request their improvement in lifestyle. But uh, every this kind of improvement needs a surprising large energy consumption. So. Uh, Everything should be considered within a so few years before 21st century. Then we can survive in the more longer future. Anyway, uh, to mm, protection of environmental circumstance, the role of catalyst is much more increase, but the uh, evaluation of the so, world and uh, many important distinguished passing government is not so much. So I would like to propose every catalyst researcher, not only the just in front of the uh, so target, but also this kind of uh, guiding principle for the uh, future of humankind should be uh, so discussed. And then so many so brilliant people should be joined uh, to this area. Otherwise, ultimate destroy of the <coughs> global will come suddenly because you know the catastrophic theory catastrophic theory is founded the uh, Lune Tombe of French uh, he had a great so mathematician uh, received the Fields uh, Prize in 1986 or something and in early 1970, he proposed uh, so catastrophic theory. It, it is uh, after Newton's differential and the integrals. But uh, Newton's differential integrals are only treated linear phenomena. But there are a lot of non-linear phenomena exist in the uh, neighbor of our life. But uh, Lune Thomas catastrophic theory can solve a lot of nonlinear phenomena. But this theory indicates if we should uh, treat or um, improve within the some, what shall I say in English? Within the first beginning, so behavior just otherwise sudden catastrophic change. If the phenomena exceed uh, some critical point, we cannot protect anymore. We faced this kind of we are 
really approached this kind of uh, point. So Professor Kurilov of Russian Academics of Science, he, he attended this meeting also. We shake hands with him. Uh, he has an opinion. Every indicates uh, concentrate to 2030s because of uh, uh, for the increase of um, mankind uh, increasing uh, across uh, some logistic curve that I said before. But logistic curve, uh, if we write the ordinary uh, scale, it's S curve, seems to be S curve. But if we so take a logarithmic uh, scale, it can be linearized. So we can uh, pro pro protect uh, the uh, Mm, uh, surely, so estimate the uh, near features. So, population of global. Population globe is estimated by this curve. So, then people increase, number of people increase, but the increase of food and the increase of high quality energy very slow, slow uh, rate. So he said, the minimum dangerous point is will be come, coming just across every indicator across 22,030 years. So I think we have not much, uh, not so much years, uh, times left in the critical point. So uh, now I am a president of Catalyst Society Japan, and then uh, I think a researcher of Catalyst in Japan, the member of this society, 2,500. I think maybe the scale of this uh, research uh, maybe so followed by uh, United States. Other countries much more uh, so small size. Maybe European Union countries together totally about to 1,000 to 30. So. But even so, a lot of researchers in catalysis in Japan, they are too much inclined to surface science. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, maybe uh, my consideration, uh, many of my uh, so responsible person in the United States also uh, has this kind of anxious and then uh, many kind of uh, international meeting and symposium will be held but uh, never this kind of international so meeting uh, has opened so for the future uh, so I I don't uh, have wait. So uh, I would like to start even on the very small step because I will, uh, our university retirement age is 63. My retirement age is now approaching. So I decide uh, just during my uh, this conference. Uh, the, my retirement uh, ceremony will be held in March 20 and 21st of 1998 in Kyoto, a beautiful Kyoto city. And then the some small but the concentrated international symposium will be held in Kyoto International.
National uh, Congress Center. And then the celebrating banquet will be held in Kyoto Hotel. And then uh, the feature of this symposium and uh, ceremony is different from the uh, uh, conventional one because almost conventional ceremony was held after retirement, uh, two months later or three months later. And neighbor professor uh, cooperate and then prepared everything. But in my case, absolutely different concept. Myself, during my so position of full professor, but uh, very near of retirement date, because uh, the end of March is retirement. So I organize this kind of important symposium to talk philosophy towards 20th century in catalyst research, and then told and discussed with each other together so that the lecture already so some already selected. So time is uh, so limited. But uh, from Japan, for example, uh, Makoto Misono, former president of Catalyst Society, and uh, Iwasawa, Yasuhiro Iwasawa, is a, he gave a very beautiful plenary lecture in this uh, conference. And uh, one more other is uh, Eiichi Kikuchi. He belongs to Waseda University. Waseda University is a, is a private university. But uh, he's uh, one of the uh, leading uh, catalyst researcher in Japan. Uh, from outside, uh, several distinguished researchers. And then told together with this uh, future and the philosophy of the catalyst. I believe this kind of so uh, positive philosophy is becoming more and more important. So, uh, finally, uh, in my talk, I would like to express my sincere thanks uh, for, for uh, Professor David Barton of California Berkeley, California University of Berkeley, uh, to have um, this kind of nice opportunity to meet. Thank you very much for your patient attention. Uh, so I finally add some small comment. Apologize for the so audience. If I can talk by my own mother language, Japanese, I can so talk much more delicate. But this is a uh, some problem. Always. So American or Western people who can speak uh, English as a mother language uh, so should be careful for the uh, foreigner who cannot speak English so fluently because always he can express his philosophy or his expression maybe his own uh, ability lower than about 20 or 30 percent. So if, but uh, if you can impress from the context of my talk, uh, please give, uh, apologize, so give me the, some uh, error or misusing uh, of uh, grammatical so using. But if I have time uh, in the future, carefully uh, reproduce this kind of uh, philosophy or thinking uh, by more careful uh, choosing the good sentence or good words. And then uh, you can see uh, and understand much
much more. Thank you. Thank you very much.